Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. They're currently working on Ahsoka Season 2 in right now the Thrawn movie. Most of what's happening right now just in general with all the different shows that are crossing over in this part of the timeline, like The Mandalorian, the upcoming stuff like Skeleton Crew, are all adapting that original Thrawn trilogy of books. One of the biggest characters that a lot of you have been asking about that we haven't seen very obviously on screen yet is Mara Jade. So I'll explain what's going on with the character, and some of you actually realize this, but Dave Filoni has actually already introduced a version of her, it's just that most people haven't spotted it yet. We'll explain what's going on, how this is going to plot through Season 2, what's going on with Luke Skywalker, The Mandalorian, Grogu. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get everything. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. The Ahsoka finale is happening next. We're doing a giveaway for The Mandalorian Blu-ray. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know what you want to see during Ahsoka Season 2. Careful for spoilers for everything on the show so far if you're not caught up, but the Mara Jade character up to this point is probably one of the biggest people that most people haven't noticed in the newer live-action stuff. Most longtime fans will affectionately know her as Luke Skywalker's wife. That's right, Luke Skywalker did have a wife and son in the Legends material. The fact that she is a Legends character in present day is one of the main reasons why younger fans don't have any idea who she is or what happened to Luke Skywalker after Return of the Jedi before Disney bought Star Wars. So rewind to October 2012. Disney buys Star Wars. What happens is there's years and years of story that have been created to fill the holes between the Star Wars original trilogy, the prequel movies, to explain what happened to all the characters, like all the way back to Knights of the Old Republic, and in present day, what happened after the events of Return of the Jedi. That was the original Thrawn trilogy, starting with Heir to the Empire. Disney basically called all that stuff Legends, said that it wasn't canon anymore, and the new material, the new books, the new TV shows going forward after 2012 created underneath Disney's brand would be the new canon. What wound up happening, though, is that Dave Filoni got to the Star Wars Rebels series in 2014. He started re-canonizing all that Legends stuff, the biggest thing being the Thrawn character. I will start my operations here and pull the Rebels apart piece by piece. They'll be the architects of their own destruction. What was first just a dream has become a frightening reality for those who may oppose us. He did change some of his backstory from the original Thrawn trilogy, but he largely started bringing back all this legend stuff. But it really wasn't until he and Jon Favreau started doing the live action shows, The Mandalorian Season 1, that they really started to recanonize and adapt elements from that Thrawn trilogy of books in the 90s. Like it really started to feel like they were doing the Thrawn trilogy. And for a lot of Star Wars fans in the 90s, after the original trilogy had long since come out, for a long time, everyone just assumed that there would never be any more Star Wars movies. We didn't know that the prequels were going to be a thing yet. So for all the fans back then, the Thrawn trilogy was like our sequel trilogy, and it's amazing. If you haven't read those original books, be sure to check them out. Now, Dave Filoni, John Favreau, like I said, changing a lot of plot elements and characters from that, but it's all coming from that trilogy. If you've read it, a lot of what you're seeing on all the shows right now will seem very familiar. For instance, on the Bad Batch series, they did Mount Tantus. That was a big plot element as part of the whole Luke cloning plot from the Thrawn trilogy. But in the live action stuff, they gave the Luke cloning plot to Grogu. That's what all the Grogu, Moff Gideon, Force Sensitive clone stuff ended up being. So as part of all that stuff, Mara Jade has just been one of the biggest question marks everybody's had. Dave Filoni also just recently confirmed how much of that Thrawn storyline that they were recanonizing for the upcoming stuff. You know, you need a conflict, and I'm uh, you know, just kind of looking at a lot of the things that were written over the years in various expanded universe projects, trying not just to look at what John and I did, but we're looking at what was done kind of historically in the time period as a guide. I think for, you know, generations of Star Wars fans before the era of, uh, you know, episode 7, 8, 9, that was what, what we saw as the post-Turn of the Jedi era when you're talking about uh, story and characters in the expanded universe so there's a, a treasure of things to to uh, draw from not just within our own series but uh, in the in the bigger galaxy but here's the thing i've seen some of you in the comments actually figured this out already dave filoni has already made shin hati the new version of mara jade in the live action stuff he's basically given all of her story arc to shin hati so that's why they're probably not actually going to do a character that's called mara jade they're just going to do shin hati and they'll give her storyline to her for those of you who have not read the Thrawn trilogy or any of the expanded universe stories featuring the Mara Jade character, she was way more than just Luke Skywalker's wife. She was a huge character. She was a Jedi born during the rise of the Empire after Revenge of the Sith, about the same age as Luke Skywalker, who the Emperor found and made his apprentice after Darth Vader and trained her separately from the Inquisitors. 
The Inquisitors were like his blunt instrument that he used to wipe out the rest of the Jedi, any other Force-sensitive people that they could find. Mara Jade was meant to be more of a Sith assassin, but at the time she was created, the Star Wars people behind the scenes hadn't really figured out what they were doing with the backstory of the Sith. That didn't happen until the mid-90s. She was created in the early 90s. The actual term Sith was created during the original trilogy because Darth Vader was described in the original scripts as a Dark Lord of the Sith. But a lot of the expanded Golden Age of the Sith stuff, that didn't come to like the mid-90s. So when she was introduced, instead of calling her just the next Sith Apprentice to the Emperor, she was just called the Emperor's Hand in like a Dark Jedi. But basically that's what she was. She was the Emperor's next Padawan. She was meant to be almost as powerful as Luke Skywalker. Like early on she was able to match him, but eventually he grew a little bit more powerful. What wound up happening is that the Emperor sends her to Jabba's palace to kill Luke Skywalker during the events of Return of the Jedi. They sort of retcon her into that story. She fails, and then after the Emperor is killed by Darth Vader, she actually mistakenly blamed him for the Emperor's death and tries to kill him. For example, she also didn't know that Anakin Skywalker was Darth Vader. After Return of the Jedi, though, she goes on the run, becomes a mercenary, and then finds a bounty on Luke Skywalker posted by Thrawn, because this is in the middle of the Thrawn trilogy. Thrawn basically puts a hit out on Luke Skywalker because he senses that he could be a big problem and throw his plans off the rails. They actually had their first real meeting on the home planet of the Salamiri where she captured him. Those are the creatures that block the force that you see in Thrawn's office here in Star Wars Rebels. Maybe we'll eventually see live action versions of that. Like if he has the carvings of them in his office, that means that they exist in the Star Wars universe because everything from Star Wars Rebels is canon and Ahsoka is kind of like Star Wars Rebels Season 5. What wound up happening between Mara Jade and Luke Skywalker, though, is that slowly he won her over. She started to relent a little bit and eventually turned good. They started their relationship, they got married, and she started helping him at his Jedi Academy. Their son was named Ben Skywalker after Obi-Wan Kenobi, but they gave that name to Ben Solo during the sequel trilogy. So, like, a lot of plot elements, characters from the Thrawn trilogy have been recanonized, but they've sort of changed things and given them to other characters and sort of spread this stuff around. Now Dave Filoni has done that with Mara Jade's storyline, giving it to Shin Hati. During that original Thrawn storyline, Thrawn created a clone of a Jedi Master to give him access to the Force and enhancing the strength of his armies. On Ahsoka, they've changed that to the Night Sisters and their zombie army. They're calling those the Night Troopers and also the Balan Skull character. They sort of split those plot elements, that character, into a couple different ideas. Balan Skull is just like the other half of that. The Dark Jedi who is briefly serving Thrawn. And on the series, Shin Hati is the Dark Jedi apprentice serving him, but she's also meant to take a lot of that original Mara Jade arc, the Dark Jedi who starts out as an antagonist to all the characters and eventually turns good. Now even if they do like five seasons of Ahsoka, I don't think they're going to get her married to Luke Skywalker or anything like that, but heading into Ahsoka Season 2, the Thrawn movie, they started to slowly put her on that redemption arc that Mara Jade got. That was what their recent fight scene, her last moments with Balan Skull, were all about. He planned to stay behind on the Peridia planet in that other galaxy to pursue that secret power, quote-unquote, that hopefully we'll learn about in the finale, and wanted her to return to the main galaxy with Thrawn. Then Ahsoka offered her hand to her as a way of showing that she wanted to help her, offer her a way out if she wanted to leave Thrawn, but it's way too early for that to happen, so they're just teasing the beginning of that. If things wind up working out with the first Thrawn movie, I think they plan on doing the full trilogy of Thrawn movies in a couple seasons of Ahsoka between those. They've already started Ahsoka season two, but we'll see when it comes to multiple Thrawn movies. Based on experience, the way Jon Favreau, Dave Filoni paced things out over the different series, my early theory is that she wouldn't turn good until either the second movie, if they do wind up doing a trilogy, and we're saying they're adapting the Thrawn trilogy of movies, it would be like their version of Dark Force Rising, which in Ahsoka's case would be a reference to the Night Sister zombie army. And at least right now, the way things are going, the only way Ahsoka Season 2 comes out before the Thrawn movie is if they start filming it next year right after they finish The Mandalorian Season 4. Otherwise, Season 2 wouldn't come out till after the first Thrawn movie, so the pacing of all this stuff, like when stuff actually happens, could change a little bit depending on how quickly they move. Now, as for Luke Skywalker, like the other side of this Mara Jade equation, Ahsoka told him that they probably see each other again. To make a Lord of the Rings reference, if this were like the Fellowship of the Ring, so to speak, the Fellowship of the Hyperspace Ring, imagine like the first half of that movie where the Fellowship actually comes together. That's basically been all of Ahsoka Season 1, just like the first half of that movie. All the episodes pretty much dedicated to just getting her to that other galaxy and finding out what happened with Thrawn this whole time, what happened with Ezra Bridger. Season 2 in the Thrawn movie would be like everything that happens after Thrawn comes back to the main galaxy when stuff really starts to get going. That's when you start to hear about the other major characters like Luke Skywalker, Grogu, the Mandalorian, the other Mandalorians getting involved. 
Right now, everything that's happening on Ahsoka is taking place directly after The Mandalorian Season 3, which took place after The Book of Boba Fett, meaning that Luke Skywalker has just continued right now while this is happening, setting up his new Jedi Academy, looking for people to train. Most of his energy is dedicated to that, which is why he hasn't gotten involved in the larger things going on in the galaxy. Also, the way they portrayed the New Republic right now, they kind of suck. So it sounds like Luke Skywalker would try to ignore all that just to avoid the headache of dealing with all those crazy New Republic senators. And since the end of The Mandalorian Season 3, Mando has just been training Grogu how to become a bounty hunter and become a Mandalorian. They might have heard more whispers about what the Shadow Council is doing since the end of Season 3, but he largely didn't get too involved with the Shadow Council and the Thrawn stuff at the end of The Mandalorian Season 3. That was more of a teaser for Ahsoka than it was for the Mandalorian characters. Like, most of the Mandalorian characters didn't hear Moff Gideon talking about Thrawn. He was only talking about his Force-sensitive clones and taking over the galaxy himself. So it's very likely that the Mandalorians, including Mando and Grogu, don't even know about Thrawn yet. I think they're saving that for The Mandalorian Season 4, because by that time, Thrawn will have come back to the main galaxy. You'll start to see the Shadow Council converging, bringing their army to bear until the end of that series when the Thrawn movie starts to pick up. There'll be a lot of cliffhangers for this in the Ahsoka finale. Don't expect them to answer all these questions. My actual finale video will post in a couple days after they release it, but after that, I'll start doing more Season 2 videos, more Mandalorian Season 4 videos, explaining what's going on next. Click here for that Ahsoka Episode 8 finale video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that. And click here for my trailers for all the other upcoming Star Wars series like Star Wars Acolyte, the Skeleton Crew trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.